Good morning, this is Chris Carter. I'm going to show you this morning how I create a puzzle for myself using this sketchbook that I made from the unfinished paintings of Betty Stroppel, who was my mentor uh, many, many years ago. And when she passed, I acquired basically her entire studio. And among the things were paintings that she had started and never completed. So I thought that one of the good things I could do with them is to turn them into a sketchbook. So I used an old world atlas and turned it into a Coptic bound sketchbook. This is uh, actually two paintings. There's some barns. She did a lot of landscapes. So there are barns up here. And she also did a lot of seascapes with boats. This is just kind of a, I like to do it. It's a, a game I play with myself that I will use these beginnings to make new shapes and work from there. So I'm just going to connect. I hope you can see this with the pencil. I'm going to connect some shapes. It's fairly arbitrary, I would say, but, but when I really think about it, it's not at all arbitrary. I'm really making calls on composition and shape as I go. I kind of have this cool shape happening already, and it will really have nothing to do with subject to start with. I'm just using her beginnings as an inspiration. So I've connected her barns and this boat to make my first shape. Ultimately, I don't really want it to look like a boat and a barn. It's hard to think and talk. What this does is it awakens both sides of my brain. It's the one that wants to be organic, and it's the one that uh, was trained by my father to use perspective. And that's the one I fight most of the time, but in the end, I really enjoy perspective too. And that will bring into play the inspiration of Escher, who used to play with perspective and do absolutely marvelous things with it. Welcome back. I'm Chris Carter, and this is part two of Betty's Barnes and Boat. In part one, 
I showed how I transformed using her barns and boat as the beginning points and the inspiration to connect points and create an abstract pattern. Today I'm going to paint it in and I'm going to use the color scheme game that I invented to teach myself color. I went back and because I could not create fun color with intention knowing what I was doing, I decided to teach myself color starting from science of light and now I enjoy color more than I ever thought would be possible for me. My strength is in line and value and shapes. It was not in color. Okay, I have an eight. Okay, so I threw a number eight, which means in the color schemes, an eight is the triad, the basic triad. So I will throw the die again to see what color I have to include in it. Two. On the other side, the dominant color, and it's not necessarily going to be the dominant color, but it will be included in it, will be the yellow-green. See number two, yellow-green. I will find my template. Here's the eight. Normally when I play the color scheme game, uh, at least in the beginning, I held to pure colors without varying the, the value of it. But because this is a very complex composition, I will allow myself slight variations. If I deviate a little bit, it's because I need to in order to make this work and create movement through space. And I will use color scheme number eight. with yellow-green as one of them. This is the color scheme I'll have. I'll use this as my dark value, this is my light value, and this is my medium value. 